everybody, thanks for joining me on the Mogabar Show. I have with me Romanian digital artist Moriseta. Moriseta, thank you very much for joining me. I have been following you on Instagram for some time and I just, you know, I, I wanted to reach out to you and talk to you more about your artwork because you're sort of a new age of artist um, where you're completely based in digital and traditionally artists were you know, canvas painting, going to art galleries, mm -hmm. but you're sort of the new mold where everything is online, everything is digital. But not only that, your art is just really, really cool. It's somewhat psychedelic, if I if I say it. It's just like, it reminds me of like 70s rock and roll, but I'm sorry, I'm talking. And <laughs> please go ahead and take it away. Tell me a little bit about yourself. What got you into art? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, and uh, I really appreciate you following me and uh, liking my art. It really means a lot for me. Um, to tell you more a bit about myself, um, I don't know, I'm not a very interesting person per se, I would say. Um, but uh, what I wanted to say is that you caught my attention when you said something. Uh, you said that art used to be very traditional. Uh, I, that's how I started as well. I started with traditional art. Um, I used to paint and draw all my life. Uh, not so constant, just, you know, throughout time. Um, and then I found this whole new digital world that uh, we're probably going to get to talk about. So uh, it's uh, it's not something that I, uh, I just chose and it happened. It was a bit of a journey to kind of say so. <laughs> Very nice. Um, what what led you? Like, what's your inspiration? Because I feel that you have an interesting trajectory where you say you started in traditional art, but you found this medium. You know, you're you call yourself a digital collage artist, mm -hmm. um, but I see it so much more because it's so. I feel like looking at your art, we have a mind into this fantastical world where I feel like I'm daydreaming, but it's a good daydream. I grew up in the 80s, so I grew up in a sci-fi world, if you mm -hmm. will, and I, I sort of love that. Like, you know, some of your paintings, um, some of your artwork, you see the moon, you see a planet, you see the rings of Saturn, you see a road, spacemen, and I feel like I'm traveling to another world. That's, that's um, Perfect. That's exactly what I'm intending to do with, with my life. Uh, it's a bit of a, a way to escape the, the reality of, of the world and just uh, go into a little place in my head where things are like okay. in my art, I guess, kind of. No, nah, that's 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 excellent. But what what brought like when did you first get that bug for art? Like when how was it that you came to say, hey, this is what I want to do? And um, you know, what was so well I was actually not very encouraged as a as a kid to do art. I, I've always done art, I've always done some kind of crafts or drawing or painting or anything like that. Um but um, nobody ever, I don't know, encouraged me or said, hey, you, you should become an artist or go to art school or anything like that. So I never thought it was uh, ever going to be something. It was just like this little hobby I had that I did now and then nothing really serious. And then about at the age of 25, let's say, um, I'm almost 31 right now. Um, I kind of had this epiphany, let's say, where uh, I just thought that I could be anything I wanted. So if I wanted to be an artist, I could just try and see if hard, works, hard work really pays off because they always say uh, hard work pays off and stuff like that. So you always think it's, uh, it's just something people throw around, uh, just the saying. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to prove and see if, if, hard work really, really can, can change my life, honestly, because that's what I wanted. I wanted a, a change in career. Um, I just quit my job. Like recently I used to be in corporate uh, and now I'm a full-time artist. So 
uh, what nice. I said. Congratulations. Out, really happy. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's like the not having a job is like the biggest achievement of my life right now. <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, I decided to uh, take art a bit more serious and see if I can build a, a career out of it. So I've been doing a lot of stuff since then. Um, like I tried uh, a lot of ways of drawing and painting in different mediums. I have uh, used to sew lingerie. I did notebooks. and Oh, wow. Things. You did it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was really trying to kind of land on something. Uh, I knew that I really wanted to to create something and have something for myself that I can do with my hands. And uh, I just wanted, I guess, to kind of see what sticks. And um, mm -hmm. at some point, I uh, made the decision to go from traditional drawing to, to digital. I used to draw a bit digitally on my phone and it kind of caught my attention. So... Uh, I invested some money and uh, bought my tablet that I still use and have right now. Um, and I started drawing digitally and that took ages. <laughs> it took so long. Uh, and I used to get bored by, by the process because like I had this mindset that I have to get the eyes right or the mouth right or the shadows right. And I, would, I wouldn't really concentrate on the composition and what I was trying to do as uh, as much as I co was concentrated on the um, technique. Uh, when I was doing notebooks, um, I used to need the covers for my notebooks and I did one for myself and I wanted this uh, unique cover and I wanted it to be original so uh, I could sell the notebook if needed. So no copyright issues or anything like that. So I wanted to create my own. And um, I was already inspired by the work of uh, Frank Moth. I don't know if you're familiar with him. I'm a really uh, big fan of his. And uh, kind of with that uh, mindset, I I tried to, to create my own. And the first artwork, I, I'm sorry, I'm talking a lot. <laughs> it's okay. No, absolutely. This is for you. So please talk. Um, so the first artwork I did was uh, like very intentional. I wanted to to capture that exact moment when I had that epiphany that I could do whatever I want with my life and I can try and be whatever I wanted to. And that moment was on a beach um, that used to be deserted. And uh, there was this very, very beautiful sunset uh, with a lot of clouds and some really, really crazy colors. And... It felt like I was taking part in the the birth of the universe. Everything so, seemed so so beautiful and so majestic, and I I felt so uh, so blessed and so grateful for for being able to see that and take part of that. I felt so special in that moment. So uh, I don't know. It was a whole range of feelings that that day at the beach, and uh, I wanted to capture that so I don't forget it. Like for myself. And I did just that, and it didn't take so long as drawing. And when I was done, it was exactly what I wanted. And I got this high out, out of it, like being, I don't know, the satisfaction when completing uh, the artwork was, was really amazing. Well, it looks good because you have quite the portfolio on Instagram as well as your own website. And what what's the process like for you? Because I would love to be in your brain. <laughs> um, I would love to like, just sit there, just have a seat and just look at the process of you creating something from like its inception to when you finish, because I feel that that's such an amazing, I think that's such that, that creativity is just so powerful. And it's so majestic. So I feel that like looking at it, you know, because I look at your artwork, I, I look at it and I'm as I'm scrolling through the different images, um, I think my favorite one personally is melting because it reminds me of um, the, oh my God, I forgot the name of the piece now from Picasso, from um, the the time pieces. Oh my goodness, from it's Picasso escaping from me. Salvador Dali. Salvador <laughs> Dali, excuse me, Salvador Dali, correct. The the, um, the time the pieces of the melting yeah, clocks. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what it's called in English right now. So. Yeah, 
yeah, I can't remember the name of it either, but it, it's just like, so it's just, so melting is one of my favorites from what I've seen. Um, I mean, I like them all, but I just feel that it's like when I'm s- s- looking at them, it's like I go into a place and I, I feel like I'm a little kid again, reading a book, you know, reading to me was at one point, the ultimate form of creativity, mm-hmm. because you lose yourself in the world of what you're reading. But then now you see the artwork <clears throat> And I sort of go into that world and I'm like imagining that I'm the one laying That's there perfect. looking back at the moon. And I was just like, okay, what, you know, I was like, what was she thinking when she created this? And I was just, so I kind of want to know, like, what is your process when you have an idea and you say, I want to do this it, to doing it? <laughs> well, it really depends. I don't have uh, like a set process that's like, I have like three or four ways things happen. Um, I either think of an idea and then I sit on it until I find the, the right pictures to, to show it. Or uh, I just browse through pictures and uh, some things stick and some things don't. Some things I get to use that day that I download them. Some things will inspire something like, I don't know, a month later, I would just look through, through my folder. Um, and a lot of times it happens that, uh, I don't have an idea, but when I'm done, I knew exactly what, what it means to me and why I did the thing I, I did. It's like, uh, it kind they kind of illustrate things that happen along the day or little snippets of discussion I might had with, might have had with, uh, with someone, um, it's kind of like a bit of my sub- subconsciousness. I would like to think that comes out and tries to see, to tell me that uh, something's occupying my mind in a way or another. How, how's your family taking to you becoming an <laughs> artist and not following a traditional, a traditional work uh, flow? This like, is- you know, did they try to push you like, you know, no, please do this, do that, you this know. This is like a very, um, a very hot topic, I think. Because, <laughs> um, uh, like, my, uh, as I've said before, I was never encouraged to actually do art. So uh, my parents really wanted me to be smart, and they sent me to the best school in our town. And I went to the best school in our town, and I couldn't really fit in. I was the, the weird kid in the school, uh, and I was always longing to, to be in the art school with the weird kids and the kids with the funny hair. Um, and uh, then when I went to college uh, again, um, I did. I would have had the option to go to some kind of art college or art university, but um, I didn't really have the training and the funds to do so. Um, and um, uh it's not like they were mean to me about my art or anything like that. They just didn't really pay attention to me doing art. They were like, oh, nice. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> they wanted me to, to have good grades and, and go to school. And uh, I went to, I studied I studied uh, public administration in, in college. And I then have, uh, also went to a master's to study public administration. It was really nothing I, I wanted to do. Uh, so once I kind of did everything that they wanted, I was free to do what I wanted. Like I did all the schools that they wanted. They didn't really get me a job or anything like that. And I, I wouldn't have wanted a job in that domain. I think it would have killed me. It would have burned off any kind of creativity I would have had. Um, so, um, then I started kind of working in, in corporate and, uh, I was kind of doing what everything anyone else was doing at my age and my friends were doing. Uh, And now uh, that I did this shift, like at the beginning, they weren't taking me so, so serious. But then when when they started seeing that I'm getting a bit of attention and uh, other people are saying that I'm good and uh, that I'm making money out of it, that I would have never been able to make... uh, at my job uh, they really see it right now and uh, 
I I was really grateful to and happy to have my my dad at my first and only exposition so far, uh, my only show that was with uh, a bunch of other artists and friends. Um, I find that that's um that's usually the way that it works with families. It's either one of two. It's either one of two ways. It's either they're really all in and supportive, or at first they're really sort of doubtful and want you to go to traditional school and career yeah. route until they see the light and come around. So that's good that he was at your first exposition. Now let's talk about the exposition because you're, like we said at the beginning, you're a new wave of artists basically. And your artwork is mainly displayed online digitally, which is how I came to mm -hmm. know you. Um, do you find that the traditional art, you know, going an ex doing an exposition, doing an art gallery, do you find that that is no longer as important as just going out there and displaying your work to the masses because now you have so much more available to you to display the I, art. You know? I, I think it's it's really important because you can see the maybe the artworks and the size that they were meant to be. And uh, um, I don't know, some are meant to be more grandiose than, than others and capture the attention differently. Um, Honestly, I haven't had a lot of experience with uh, art galleries. I, I've never been, um, how do you say? I never had a show in an art gallery. Uh, we had a show that was uh, organized um, by another collage artist, uh, Filter of uh, Perceptions. Um, and uh, it was a show organized in my country in uh, Romania with uh, some uh, of the best collage artists from uh, from Romania. And I was part of that and I was very excited and happy to be part of, uh, of, of a community and of artists first because I, I was feeling like yeah. I kind of find, found people like me finally and, and that was a really nice feeling. And then having people to to come and and stare at the walls where our artworks were, it was really nice. You you kind of daydream when when you're younger or when you're a kid about things like that. And when you brush your teeth and you look in the mirror, you make up some some kind of speech or something that people are gonna ask you about your life. And then when it's it's happening, it's it feels surreal and it. it uh, I don't know. It's it's very nice. I'm very happy and very grateful to be where I am. Um, do you ever worry about your art being online and available to so many people that people are going to use your art without your permission, potentially, because it is available digitally and it's available out there? Uh, or do you just... Yes and no. Um, like, I kind of have this rule... Uh, when you go online, online you can you kind of have to assume that some things might happen. Uh, people might criticize you. People might steal your art. So that's kind of a risk that I took. Um, I have some uh, vigilant uh, followers and friends on Instagram that uh, um, sometimes uh, point out people that uh, stole my art, and uh, I either talk to them or I report them on Instagram, depending on how nice for uh, how much they cooperate um but i have this i'm like i'm attached to my art but not at a point to get mad or or sad about it i don't know it doesn't infuriate me or or anything like that because i produce one every every day and i i don't know how to kind of explain it uh, in my head, there's so many. Uh, every every one of them was a thought one day, and you have a million thoughts each second. So uh, it's not it's not the end of the world for me. What's um What's next for you? Like, what do you want to do next with your art? Um, so, you're online. You're you're pretty popular, I think. Anyway, but. What what do you want to do next with your artwork? Well, uh, I, I've told you I just quit my job. And uh, the idea behind that was to kind of have some more time to explore some new things. And I really want to go into animating my, uh, my artwork at first. And then maybe going into making some uh, short movies or, or something like that. And this collage kind of style. Um, 
I'm on my way to doing that. I'm, uh, I have to buy some uh, fancier equipment and, and stuff like that. And uh, I really got to get into learning the animation because I, I don't really know a lot right now. Uh, but that's kind of the plan. I feel like I got to a place where I can really tell a story that much in just one image. And I want to be able to tell a longer story. Oh, that's excellent. I can't wait to see that. That's, I, I feel like that's going to be so cool and, and so trippy. Um, what's What's been the biggest compliment that anyone is giving you about your artwork in terms of like what what you're doing? Or what's been the biggest sort of, um, what's the biggest motivating factor? Um, you know, biggest compliment and motivating factor. So it's a two-part question um, because I'm, I'm always curious about the feedback people get when they create? So uh, I, I mostly have good feedback. And if it's like any kind of negative feedback, it's just like mildly negative. Like I think that shadow should have been in a different place or something like that. Or why are the stars over the planets? Because they have anyway, like some little details, nothing, nothing yeah. really mean. Uh, the most amazing pe thing people call me, which is like it almost makes me laugh as a, a genius <laughs> which is like, come on, it's, it's just a little mean you know, like really it's but i mean but you you are a genius in what you're doing because it looks amazing and, and you i think anytime someone is able to send somebody to a different world um creatively i think that is a level of genius i i, I think that's a very much well-deserved uh uh, I, I'm not there yet, definitely. Yeah. Maybe maybe during my lifetime at 70 or 80, I'm going to be <laughs> one of those artists that you could really call a genius. But right now, I, I feel like uh, I'm so small and I'm just starting out and I, I just have a few ideas in my head that I just put out. That, that humbleness will get you far because, you know, all the genius never considered themselves geniuses. So just throwing that <laughs> out there. Um, okay, I guess. But I don't know what to say. <laughs> you got me in the in the corner. I know, I know. I'm trying. Um, no, but I think this is um, really good. Where are you? Do you have any other expositions planned? I know you said you only did the one, but do you have anything planned we were, for you know? We were kind of talking again. Um, some of the people that did the previous uh, collage festival, that's what it was called, um, uh, to and with some other people to organize another event. But with the corona situation right now, um, it's not easy because today there's one thing, the other day there's another. Um, like a lot of events got canceled again. Um, so I don't know if that's going to be able to happen this year. Uh, but as soon as the the uh, pandemic is, uh, I don't know, gone or we're allowed to actually organize events, uh, I really want to do, do something. Um, what has the pandemic, because you've still been producing artwork at a rapid pace during the pandemic, has that brought about a different way of thinking for you yeah. or creating? Yeah, yeah definitely. It, it was... The pandemic was just really weird in, in general for a number of reasons, but uh, with my art, I uh, I became really, really isolated. I didn't talk to a lot of people, and I used to take a lot of inspiration from conversations with people and how they felt about different things, so it was just kind of me in my own head, and... Uh, uh, I'm sorry for that. It was kind of just... It's okay. uh, me in my own head and uh, I I came to find that I was kind of repeating the same and I'm, I'm, I still am repeating uh, the same theme which is kind of going somewhere th this place that you always have to, to reach uh, which is not actually a place but it's more of a state of mind and I I think it has to, to relate to happiness or or bliss or i don't know some kind of perfection that i have in my head and this involves the the pandemic being gone and being in nature and being able to we were locked up at night for for a lot of time uh 
and just being able to see the stars at night became something I really missed and being seeing the sky sure so I was really influenced about uh from by being isolated and uh, by the whole pandemic and I had days when I was kind of low um now I'm just really used to it but on the other hand i kind of felt like this pandemic was something uh it's gonna sound weird but i felt like it was something i wished because i really wanted to some time off from work i didn't wish for so much time off from work but i i really wanted so some more time to uh to work on stuff and then the pandemic hit and was that was perfect for me to to be able to have more time for for myself Okay. No, that's, that's, I, yeah, that makes sense. I think a lot of people have felt that way, obviously not to the extent that we had the time off and with the negative effects that everyone experienced, yeah, but I was actually, I think, sorry, uh, I just want to say that no, I was okay. actually very lucky because, uh, the, the pandemic really didn't hit me financially that bad. Like, uh, people lost their jobs and, um, like my own pay cut, my own pay got cut at my corporate job. So, um, uh, I, I was lucky that I had my art to, to bring me money and not, not have me feel that. Cause like, if I, if I wasn't doing art, uh, it would have been a different, really different situation. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, Mariseta, I do not want to take up so much of your time, but I do, I, I do want um, people to be able to see your art. Um, obviously, I already mentioned that they can find you on Instagram, but where else can they find you? You have your own website. Yeah, that's that's um, mainly the, the two places, the the website and, uh, and the Instagram. I do have a page on Facebook, but let's be serious. No one goes on Facebook anymore. <laughs> there, I said it. Um. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Nothing wrong with saying that. Yeah, so uh, that that's mainly uh, where where you can find me. My uh, whole complete personal work is uh, is on Instagram, and uh, the website has some of my personal work, but uh, it's most mostly great for uh, checking out uh, commissions that I've uh, did for people. That's excellent. I. Um... You know, I, I'm very excited to have spoken to you. Thank you for taking the time. I'm grateful to you. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see what you do next. I really do love your artwork and I love looking at it, you know, on a daily basis. I, I go to your page and I'm just like, this is so <laughs> cool. And, you know, I've shared it with some friends you. and, you know, everybody agrees. And I'm just like, this is awesome. So I, I'm I'm very fortunate and appreciative that no, you I, I, <laughs> you know took the time to speak to me so thank no, you no i am and uh, and i hope what i what i said may make some kind of sense i'm uh, i'm really nervous Absolutely. And, uh, a really shy person so it's okay <laughs> hope i wasn't babbling it was really uh, nice to talk to you and i really appreciate it <laughs>